Peter. Hey. Let's talk about the LA Angels. No. Yes. Oh, we time. Do this, we do this every single year, Jack. You and I, we play general manager for the Los Angeles Angels. And we go in after we look at their roster. We look at what they can do. And we think the world of them. And what do they do every single year? This is the episode that I was dreading the most. But with that said, they look pretty good. They look great. So that's why we're knocking it out as the third team is the GM series. Just baseball show, Jack, Peter. Today is Thursday, November 31. No, December 1. December 1. My birthday's in two days. My birthday's in two days. Thoughts on that? Happy early birthday, Chief. Yeah, but we have, an episode, we have an episode on December Friday, 3rd? so save it. You know, save it. Okay, yeah, fine. All right, Jack, Peter, two days before Peter's birthday. Uh, we're talking about the LA Angels today. You're in Santa Barbara. I'm in Indy. New pad with the brick wall. The brick wall is not going to be the background. Mm. I've got, um, I okay, adult move here. Listen up. Um, Indianapolis and New York rent are two very different things. Correct. So while you are amped to live in a studio by yourself, I was just in a studio by myself. I was like, I wouldn't mind more space because I can't just rip the bodega and like go have fun every night. Uh, sometimes I need to be a hermit. And I was like, you know what? Time for a one bedroom. So I, I moved into a one bedroom. How about that? I'm very proud of you. I wish the brick background could be your background because as many people know, the brick background for me kind of changed baseball media. Yes. And then you decided to abandon it with two portraits from our guy, Kyle Taylor, who I, I think is still commissioning the, uh, the Burley one for me. So I'm really excited to see that thing, but I will not be keeping uh, the brick. You had red brick. I've got yellow brick. If it was mm-hmm. red brick, I would really think about it. Yellow brick. I- I'm kind of opposed, but uh, that's the deal. That's enough decor. I promise we're going to have some fun prints in the back and all of that. Uh, but let's talk about the LA Angels here because the Angels for the umpteenth year in a row were just an utter disappointment. There was nothing going on there when we thought there was everything going on here. You have Mike Trout and Shohei Otani. Trout, again, an abbreviated masterpiece. He doesn't play a full 162. If he did, I mean, he's probably running away with the LMVP. He's probably smashing a record that Aaron Judge doesn't. But here we are talking about a what could have been season for Mike Trout. Shohei Otani was arguably as good. He was a better pitcher than he was when he won the MVP in 2021. Uh, Everything else went to absolute shit. I think you're so right about them being probably the most disappointing team in baseball. Not just because they have Mike Trout and Shohei Otani on the same team, a sentence that you and I will utter for the next 45 minutes again and again and again, because those two still are the best players in baseball. You could throw Judge, Mookie, whatever. I'm not here to debate that right now. What I am here to do is to debate whether the Angels can actually make it over the hump, because the Astros finished 106 and 56, the Mariners finished 90 and 72 last year, and the Angels finished 73 and 89. But in May... This Angels team was competing with the Astros, and everything looked really good. And then injuries just hit this team. You mentioned Mike Trout. I mean, there was injuries to the starting rotation, too. You know, but with some exciting things, like Reed Detmers came up after kind of struggling initially, but kind of showed that he can be a definite mainstay in this rotation. They made some nice additions to the bullpen. You know, they got Aaron Loop after that amazing season with the New York Mets, but he did not replicate his success in Queens when he moved over to Anaheim or Los Angeles. Um, he had a 3 8 4 ERA compared to like a one something ERA over there in New York. Um, they signed Ryan Tapera, who was fine for them. I thought he was decent. I mean, he had a 3 6 1 ERA, it was nothing to parade over. Um, and they traded Rossi Iglesias, was, which was a guy that they signed for a big deal. And then they ended up trading him for Jesse Chavez and Tucker Davidson. Tucker Davidson, front of the pod, made a few starts for the Angels and possibly could be um, someone that they look at in the rotation next year. But overall, just to summarize, it was incredibly disappointing because it's one thing, Jack. It's one thing for you to go in and to expect to win 65, 70 games. It's another thing to come into the season expecting 
expecting to win 90 and winning 73. That's almost worse because it's the expectations. It's the fall from grace. It's the, it's just the disappointment. And well, let's get sucked back in. Are we, dude? I hate this. We're going to get sucked back in because their roster looks great. It looks good. Let's make it great. And I will say that injuries hampered them, right? Anthony Rendon had fewer than 200 plate appearances. That's a big omission, but uh, yeah, I have been a denier of Anthony Rendon for a little bit. <laughs> the guy's going to make $37 million this year. And, yep. and you look at the payrolls in 2023 and the angels are already near the top. They've got about $145 million committed before arbitration. And before yep. you factor in uh, the pre-arb deals as well. So this team is going to be flirting with the luxury tax. If they do nothing in free agency, I don't know how the angels feel about the luxury tax. I don't think they paid the luxury taxes here. There were six teams that paid the luxury tax uh anaheim was not one of them uh i don't think they're afraid of it they're an la team they've got mike trout and shohei otani if there's one year to go over the luxury tax this is probably the year to do it uh and you have shohei for what he's giving you on an incredibly raw deal this guy's making less than 20 million dollars but you've got about 70 million dollars maybe over 70 million dollars committed to anthony rendon and mike trout you feel good about the trout you don't feel that good about Rendon right now, but do you think we're having a different conversation on July 4th? Do you think we're sitting here watching the fireworks, uh, having a libation and saying, you know what? Anthony Rendon has been kicking ass this year. I think it's just if, if, he, if he stays healthy. I mean, I hate to put it that plainly, but, but he, when he's on the field and healthy, he looks awesome. When he's not, he's not. It's, it's, it's white or black with him. It almost seems like there's no gray area. Uh, so I, what I will say, and I know that he was dealing with some nagging injuries while he was playing this year, but he slugged yeah. 380 when he was on the field. With but the nagging injuries. I don't, nagging I don't, injuries. I don't put that on him. Like, I don't think, oh, Anthony Rendon now is just dropped off the face of a cliff and it's going to slug 400 next year. If he is fully healthy, I expect top five top 10 at least production from the third base position. I don't see any reason why you shouldn't. I think he was hampered by injuries. I really do. But it's not even just Rendon that we're talking about here who had a step back. How about Jared Walsh, a guy who we put in our top 10 first baseman moving into the year. A That same Jared Walsh that in 2021 – had an 849 OPS with 29 bombs and 34 doubles last year, 643 OPS with 15 bombs and 18 doubles. Granted, I mean, he didn't have the same number of at bats. He only played 118 games compared to 144 in 2021, but he was expected to be an important left-handed bat, which the angels really need. And he barely gave them anything anything last year and I dove into him trying to figure out what happened there's not a lot of statistics that I can point to to say okay if he fixes that he'll be better I really think it was just a down year I mean I remember in 2021 this dude crushed sliders crushed fastballs five run value against a fastball nine run value against a slider both of those were in the negative like it's just an enormous drop off from production and what can we say? Like, I think he'll bounce back. You think, because you see the talent. Why can't he? Yeah. But I don't know. That's why there's so many things up in the air. But I look at it, you know, the preseason angels look as good as anybody again. And here we are with the preseason angels. So you assume health and my thing about assuming health with the angels, they, they got very unhealthy very quickly. And, and even at the end of the year, right. You saw Mickey Moniak cry when uh, he got hurt near the end of the year. And, and Mickey Moniak was, you know, the guy that came over straight up for Noah Syndergaard at, at the deadline when Syndergaard went to Philly and Moniak, he was showing flashes of not being one, one, but showing flashes of being a serviceable major league outfielder. And then all of a sudden, injuries just cut his season short and he was so frustrated i think that was the frustration with a lot of guys with the angels um so I, i'm not forecasting injuries 
let's just forecast bad luck for the Angels because they've had bad luck on the position player health front in recent years. So where's your contingency plan? Let's look at Anthony Rendon. Where's the contingency plan? It's actually great. Two minor leaguers, one guy that was previously DFA'd, I think, came or were, were sent away for Giovanni Urshela. So Urshela is now the backup third baseman slash third baseman. Roster resource at Fangraphs has him as the starting shortstop. We got to fix that right now. Yeah. Um, but Urshela as a backup plan to Anthony Rendon feels really good. Feels as great. The backup third baseman shortstop. Um, I like having Adele and Moniak as the fourth and fifth outfielders. When you've got Taylor Ward in left, Mike Trout in center, and Hunter Renfro acquired via trade in right. Obviously, Otani's your DH. And then you loop around the rest of the field. You've got Logan O'Hoppy and Max Stassi as your catchers. I Love feel that. great about that tandem. And then here you are with Renjifo at second um, and Jared Walsh at first with David Fletcher uh, waiting in the wings. We'll start with the hitters and then we'll get to the pitching here. Where are the surefire they are in the lineup all year long if they're healthy? They have Mike Trout and Shohei Otani in the same lineup. Uh, Shohei Otani is going to be the DH and that he's going to step on the mound and be a top 10, 5, don't care where you rank him pitcher, one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. You'd assume yeah. that Luis Renjifo will be the second baseman, and he deserves to be the second baseman. His He doesn't walk. He had a 294 on base percentage last year, but he slugged 429. He's a, he's a solid player. I think he's solid. He had 17 bombs. Maybe solid is even a bit much, but he's your second baseman, and he should be. Taylor Ward, there is no reason why he shouldn't play left. No, yeah. absolutely no reason at all. Had it over an 800 OPS, 23 bombs. He's a 29 year old who was a previous first rounder. Like this guy should be the left fielder. He earned it. If Anthony Rendon is healthy, we're going to say this again, 70,000 fucking times on this podcast. If yeah. Anthony Rendon is healthy, he is your third baseman. Hunter Renfro, the newly acquired, they gave up what chance and junk in that trade. Elvis yeah. Paguero, um, Adam Seminaris. I don't even know how to pronounce that name. I don't really know who that is, quite honestly, with you. Um, Jared Walsh is going to play first base, and Logan O'Hoppy is going to play catcher. Like, that's your starting eight, and then it's all about who's going to play shortstop. And Gio Rochella, I watched him play shortstop on the New York Yankees. He can at least feel the position if the Angels want to work on pitching and starting pitching and their bullpen, and then their bench looks great. Like, that's the problem with the Angels. They don't have major holes throughout their lineup, except you could say shortstop. But am I excited for Hunter Renfro and right? Not really. Am I really excited for Luis Renjifo at second base? Not particularly. Am I crazy hyped? Am I expecting a huge bounce back from Jared Walsh? I don't know. And then Logan O'Hoppy, the great thing is he is a great prospect and you have Max Stassi, so I'm confident in the catching position as a whole, but am I confident in a real first-year catcher at 23 years old? Not particularly. So there is the problem here. It's not like – like there's no holes, but it's there's not a lot of stuff jumping at me, but it's yeah. good. So via trade, Hunter Renfro is the right fielder. I yes. do believe he's the right fielder. And he should be. Um, the position – I – I say there's nothing to be done catching wise because you've got a newly extended Max Stassi and one of the best catching prospects in baseball and maybe the breakout prospect uh, in 2022, not named Andy Rodriguez, is Logan O'Hoppy. So I do feel good about that tandem. I don't think they're going to add to that tandem at all. Um, my they thing, shouldn't. They definitely shouldn't. That's they, Stassi yeah, could yeah. be good on his own. If Logan O'Hoppy Stassi could be good on his own. Um, but out I, and pulls I, a Jared I, I, Kelnick. Like, <laughs> but I mean, using those two as a 90 game, 70 game, you know, like share or 160 in favor of O'Hoppy, I feel really good about that. Me too. Um, they need to get better at short. I think that's really the only spot. Maybe sign a backup first baseman. Um, I want to start there. I want to throw out some really small names that could benefit uh, from being like behind Jared Walsh um, or maybe if Otani needs a day off once in a blue moon. Might I recommend a Luke Voigt? Recently non-tendered, like that's a power bat off the bench. I love that idea. 
not only because I think Luke Voigt is somehow becoming kind of underrated. I think he got shipped off to Washington. I don't think there was a lot of reasons to for him to be motivated. And then if you put him in a lineup here where you can platoon him, Jared Walsh against righties, Voigt against lefties, that feels a lot better. The only issue is Shohei Otani plays DH. So yeah, so you're going to force Voigt to play first. You're going to force Voigt to play first, and then you don't have Walsh in the lineup, which could be a good thing. I don't know. Yeah. Um, other names that could jump out. How about like a Yuli Gurriel? Is he going to? Is are they going to be priced out of him as a platoon first baseman? He's 38 years old. I'd rather have Luke Voigt. I think Luke Voigt makes more sense there than Yuli Gurriel does. I, I think Yuli Gurriel is going to go somewhere where he can be the first baseman. And I don't know if Gurriel at this point in his career at 38 years old is still trying to win. I wouldn't put it past him, but I also yeah. wouldn't pa- put it past him to just take a bag. With Voigt, you know, he wants to compete, I'm assuming. Um, I think he would take a little bit less in order to get put on the angels in a good spot where they're going to use him correctly rather than a Yuli Gurriel where it feels like Gurriel would go to whoever gives him the back. Yeah. Uh, um, last one that I want to throw you Trey Mancini. Again. Mm, I just, I want to see what the open market thinks of Mancini because Mancini was good on the Orioles before going over to the Houston Astros, and then he didn't really get much of a shot. I mean, he did kind of, but he never really performed with the Astros either. I'm very curious to see if the market goes back to his Orioles days rather than thinking of him as a platoon because he still is a good player, and I think a team is going to want to sign him to be their full-time starter rather than being a platoon guy also mancini could play the outfield a little bit angels are kind of backed up on outfielders at the moment so yeah, I, I, mean, I like void i think the first name that you brought up is the best one yeah and void is undoubtedly the cheapest option and yeah. you're right they are backed up outfield wise because they do have adele and moniac as the fourth and fifth outfielder one of them is going to be in salt lake which is kind of brutal who would you put in salt, salt lake i guess adele I guess Adele, but I feel like it should be Moniac, but I, I agree with you. Adele. I guess it's Adele. I know. He's so talented. <laughs> and Moniac so went stupid. first overall. Oh. Okay. Now the big question. Are they in play for a top four shortstop? Not with the needs that they have at other places. You just said it yourself. They're on the brinks of the luxury tax. I mean, if they want to pay, if they want to have a $250, $270 million payroll, sure. I just, there's no indications that that's the case. Um, I mean, we have the pocketbook. We're playing general manager with the Los Angeles Angels. um, And there's a shortstop that I want to throw at you who I think would be relatively cheap. It's a reunion. I I don't know if we're thinking about the same guy. No, we're not. Jose not Iglesias. Anymore. I would I would sign okay, Jose Iglesias. So I was not thinking of Iglesias. Who are you thinking of? Okay, so I would sign Elvis Andrews. Okay. We're on the same uh, – that was the second name that I was going to bring up. The reason why yeah. I like kind of the Jose Iglesias reunion there is I still think that he's a good defensive player while Andrews, like, I don't know if they need his bat as much. Um, I mean, they still could use his bat. I like either or. Um, hmm. I think both are good. Remember, options, you got Fletcher on the bench too. I mean, who cares? Honestly, who cares? But like, he can also play a little short no, and give can't. an old guy some breaks, and yeah. that's why I feel okay with Andrews. He can't play short. Stop. David Fletcher played shortstop. No way. He played some short this year. I know, but no way. Like that can't be. I'm not saying. He can't. I'm just saying he can't. Like, no way David Fletcher is going to be taking reps at short for the Angels. They can't do that. Oh, I'd rather put Urshela there. Fletcher can't hit. David Fletcher finished 17th in AL MVP voting in 2020. <laughs> that's awesome. Congrats. That is awesome. And that's why he has a cult following. And probably Angels fans are like, stop disrespecting David Fletcher. And I'm just like, sorry. Do you want to win or do you want, like... You want a clown show? 
Listen, Aram and I disrespected Nick Madrigal yesterday, so we're disrespecting David Fletcher today. That's just how that works. Yeah, but we don't have a short bias. We think Jose Altuve is a Hall of Famer. Yeah, um, and we like the short pitchers. So, Stroman? Lighter. <laughs> yeah, lighter. Um, all right. Andrew, Sor- <laughs> Andrew Sora Iglesias. Who's going to be cheaper? Because I don't see much of a difference there. I want to sign whoever's cheaper. Um, because I want to add big names to the starting rotation, and I want a bunch of bullpen guys. Because I hate Iglesias is two years younger. All right. Let's sign Andrews to a one-year deal. You think he'd take a one-year? Because I think Iglesias is going to be two yeah. or three. I think Andrews takes a one-year deal. Let's sign Andrews then. Because I'd, he got I want to spend... Released. Yeah. I want to spend as least money as possible on the shortstop position because they, they Urshela can play shortstop. So if you're going to kind of use both of them at the same time, I kind of wish Elvis Andrews hit left-handed, but whatever, like a shortstop platoon. I think that's hilarious, but like <laughs> with this day and age of baseball. Also one more thing about Jared Walsh too, while I'm on the subject of lefty righty, I think the shift is going to be big for him getting rid of it. Um, because he was crushed by the shift last year, and he's always been crushed by the shift. He's a guy who, you know, he's not necessarily pull happy, but I've noticed that, um, like, one of the things I noticed, like, when he's pull happy, I mean, he crushes balls. But when he's trying to, you know, shoot the ball the other way, if he's trying to hit the ball to center field much, like, it looks prettier, but it's not resulting in success. He's kind of just a pull happy guy. And if you if you disavow the shift – that I think will at least tick up his production a little bit. So that's just on the Jared Walsh front, but still just a couple more seconds on the shortstop front. Give me Andrews because they still have Zach Neto. Like when is he coming up? Is he going to be a factor this year at all? No, no, no. If, if everything goes according to plan, maybe at the very end of the year, but you got to get to the very end of the year. And that's if everything goes well. So we're just going to assume he's not. You can't bank on it. Yeah. So I I do like Andrews on a one-year deal for that reason. Mm -hmm. Um, And if it goes really well, sign him to another one-year deal and have Neto take over midway through if Andrews isn't cutting it. Like We kind of got roasted for the Gene Segura reunion thing um, because I guess there was a fight, um, which I do kind of remember. But I didn't know that there was like some disagreements between management. I didn't know he called people out. So that was my fault. I remembered the fight. Didn't think it was that big of a deal. Um, and then with Jose Iglesias, like sometimes a reunion doesn't happen. So that could be somewhere where it's like, yeah, he ain't coming back. Um, so yeah, give me Andrews. That makes sense. He's been on the West Coast. He played in Oakland. Yeah, I like I like Andrews. Yeah, give me Elvis Andrews revenge series in Oakland. Yeah. That'll be electric. Like All right. on a so Wednesday at one. Yeah. Easy. And there's about, there's yeah, 400 I'll... people there. <laughs> um, all right, so the the additions that we made offensively are Luke Voigt as a bench slash platoon first baseman, and Elvis Andrews on a one year deal. I feel decent about that that lineup. We're kind of on a roll. We're kind of on a roll here, <laughs> and, and we're not being too crazy. We're talking about a guy that was non tendered and a guy that was released last year. So uh, I, I feel like we're being fair. Um, here's how the starting rotation shakes out right now. Shohei Otani's the one. He's Tyler big. Anderson, they just signed 33-year-old at time of opening day, Tyler Anderson. Three years, $39 million. I like it, Deal. Um, it is, you know, he wasn't the best lefty on the market. Rodon was. Um, after that, things get a, a little shaky on the free agent market, and Anderson was a great lefty um, to grab. But Patrick Sandoval is also left-handed. Jose Suarez is also left-handed. Reed Detmers is also left-handed. Mm. I want another right-handed starting pitcher. Oh, by the way, uh, Tucker Davidson is left-handed as well, and he's the six as it stands right now. I want a right-handed pitcher that can be the two or the three. Otani's the one. I don't feel great about the Angels contending for the AL West if Tyler Anderson is the two. Me neither. I would like if Anderson was the three. So can we go after a righty two? Can I also say that I think Anderson's the four? I don't know how good he's going to be with the Angels. Sandoval's the three? I like Sandoval. I do. I think Sandoval will be a better pitcher than Tyler Anderson will next year. I like Detmers, too. I'm not saying I like Detmers more than I like Tyler Anderson, but Detmers and, and figuring out the slider at the end of the year... 
I do think that they have four legitimately good starters here. And Jose Suarez is a guy that, you know, can be factored out, can be a multi-inning reliever. So let's go after a relatively big name in the right-handed starting pitching department. You in? You know who I want on the Angels? Who? Jacob DeGrom. Jesus. Why not? Why not? Can't. We're not spending any. He's already at Tampa Bay, right? <laughs> Shut up. Seriously, though. The Angels are competing right now. Right now. How much longer are you going to have Otani? You're going to waste all of Trout? If you are going to spend money, why not Jacob motherfucking DeGrom? And the great thing about the Angels is they have starting pitching depth. If DeGrom has an injury here or there, they're not going to fall flat on their faces unless Trout and then Otani and Walsh and Rendon, they all get injured. Then it's all for nothing anyway. But this feels like a move that could come out of nowhere, right? The Angels say, we're going to offer you a four-year deal worth $180 million or something like that. Maybe four years, 200. They put all their eggs in the Jacob deGrom basket. Kind of seems like an Angels deal anyway. And you put deGrom next to Otani. And then you have Sandoval. That's the righty. I mean, we could go on some other names and make this team very solid, or we can open up the checkbook and say, let's win now. Let's win now. Are we going to beat the Astros? I don't know. But DeGrom gives us a really good shot if everyone stays healthy. Yeah, it's easy for me to tell you that the Angels will be good with Jacob DeGrom. Every team would be good with Jacob DeGrom. But if we're not spending on any of the shortstops, we're not buying anything else, we're going to buy some low relievers and the angels have a big payroll anyway some guys are off the books justin upton is gone a lot of other guys gone why not go get jacob de yeah so my only pushback is durability i have no idea how durable de is obviously when he's on when he's on the mound he's the best pitcher on the planet uh but in in an organization where um fragility was king and fragility has been king for a long time. And, and guys have not been reliably on the field. Might I point you to a guy that has been reliably on the field for the entirety of his near two-decade career, except for Tommy John? I think Justin Verlander is a little bit better of a fit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'll go. I'll, I'll take Verlander. Like, ah, yeah, just, sure. I think you're guaranteed a hundred and. 70 180 innings from Verlander and you're not guaranteed that from DeGrom at any point in his career I don't believe the human body can sustain 103 mile an hour darts 100 times a game that's how crazy Verlander is he's 40 and we're like he's yeah we're probably we're gonna like, go yeah, three years 150 <laughs> yeah yeah I, I mean yes sure I have nothing wrong with that of course it's exactly what I want it's like the I want same the conversation I'm ace the mega right. ace Right. I like if Otani's the two, the I'm I'm putting like I don't I, I'm not allowed to bet on baseball. I will go under any avenue possible to bet on the Angels to win the World Series if Shohei Otani's the two. We're gonna do it again. We're gonna bet on their over I'm do you know how much money I've lost Fine. in this over win total? It's been Fine. like four Whatever. years running. It's been like four years running, Jack. Yeah. I'm not having a good yeah, time. I get it. Um, now, I get it. It's an identical conversation, Degrom Verlander. We just had the conversation real quick. If they don't get either of those two guys, who are the other pitchers on the market that jump out to you? And, and the reason that we're not pitching trades right now is, I think, because they just don't have any capital to trade from. Um, they're going to hold on to Neto. They're obviously holding on to Ohapi. There's not much else on the farm right now. We talked about the outfield surplus. You could flip Adele for somebody, but what's Adele going to get you? I think there are better options on the free agent market right now. Um, If they don't go and get DeGrom or Verlander, I'm not the biggest fan of Chris Bassett. I really don't think that he's due for immense success right now. Um, My eyes gravitate towards Nate Yavaldi. My eyes also gravitate towards Jamison Tyone. I would feel a little bit better with Yavaldi 
Um, but I think both those guys could be solid options as threes. Um, the name that I was going to bring up, um, you haven't mentioned him yet, and I'm actually surprised you didn't. Um, West Coast, they already have Otani. What about Kodai Senga? Yeah, that also works. That, I mean, that that pitcher right there makes a lot of sense to me. Um, he's been really good over there in Japan, just dominant. He's up to 100. He's got that splitter, that vintage splitter, but he's got like three other pitches. I mean, it's it's hard to get a lot of, you know, video on this guy, but the video I've seen, like he looks like, the real deal. I just don't think he's going to come over and be an ace. And I don't even know if he's going to come over and be a two. So that's why, like, I like him a lot. I think he makes a lot of sense on this team, but it's just, are we trying to put them over the top? Like if we're trying to put them over the top, it's probably either Verlander or DeGrom because I agree with you. Like Bassett is good. I don't think like Bassett is the piece here. You know, you got Michael Waka who you could do on a short term deal. Again, you got Eovaldi, you got guys like Ross Stripling, um, you got Tywin Walker if you want, Tyone. Um, I mean, it gets a little thin after that. Um, so for me, the two pitchers that I wanted to bring to the table for you today was Jacob deGrom and Kodai Senga. Um, but I love the Verlander take. I just want a dog. I don't want Waka. Even the Waka could be fine. Stripling could be fine. I want a snarling dog on the Angels. A one, a dominant figure. Have you seen any like contract prediction that makes sense for Sanga? Well, I've seen at the very beginning of free agency. I saw seven for one fifty five, which is what Tanaka did, and then I saw things like four for sixty. I and know those are two totally different numbers and years. I don't know, like, and and I'm not even going to try and guess because I'm not going to pretend that I've watched a whole year of Kodai Senga. I've watched the highlights that are available on YouTube. I've read write-ups of Kodai Senga, and that's about it. I have no idea how to value his market. Is it a Seiya Suzuki market? Are we going to see five years 90? I think five years 90 makes a lot of sense, but seven for 155 for a guy that you have no idea how he's going to perform, I don't think it makes much sense. So that's the that's the frustrating thing. It's my favorite thing about international free agency. It's my favorite thing about um the NBA draft and grabbing a Porzingis or grabbing a Luka Doncic. What, what the fuck are you going to get? I have no idea. That's fun with Kodai Senga because you could get Tanaki, you could get Darvish, you could also get Kohei Arihara. I've got no idea. It sounds more like Tanaka and Darvish than Arihara, but you just have no idea. So no idea. that's the worry for me when we've been on this team, like they're going to be great. And then they fucking suck every year. So I want somebody that I'm going to put, if I'm Perry Manassi, I'm putting my head on the pillow saying, I've got Jacob fucking DeGrom on this team. I've exactly. got Justin Verlander on this team. So I, I feel a lot better about somebody that has, you know, a seven to shit. If you're signing Verlander, like 18 year major league career under their belt. Exactly. I think with Kodai Senga, think about it. Kevin Gosman, Robbie Ray, these guys were five years, 110, five years, 100. Like, are you giving Kodai Senga more than that? I'm not. Robbie Ray won the Cy Young. Kevin Gosman looked amazing with San Francisco and then looked amazing again with Toronto. Are you giving Kodai Senga more than that? No. You can't. You can't. But like so, 102 with, with nasty off speed. Yeah, but he's not going to be one. He, you know, he's going to come over like Tanaka. Do you remember Tanaka? I feel like I heard reports that he was 98 and then he comes over. He's 91. Like, I don't know if these guys are 102. I bet Senga is going to be 94 to 96. Uh, teams. So the, the rumor around NBA teams was that they were. And like we saw with the Utah Jazz, like trying to just sell every piece in order to create the best odds in the 2023 draft because that's when Wembanyama is coming over. Um teams were were looking at the 2023 draft like four years ago. Like, hey, there's this kid, Victor Wembanyama, who's going to be insane. 
I feel like that's what teams are going to do. Like they're going to clear the payroll for Roki Sasaki exactly. in 2027 or 2028. That's the dude. That's the dude. <laughs> that's the dude. It's like, it's Kayla Williams. Like do, do the Colts want to suck this year to get Bryce Young or do they want to really suck next year to get Caleb Williams? I think the answer is the latter. So it is the latter. I, I'm not saying like, hey, let's plan for 2027, but um, is it that far? I thought it was like 2025 ish. I don't think he's going to get posted until like eh, maybe 2025. I but have it's, no idea. it's in a while. It's in a I've while. No so it's, idea. it's not something to worry about on December 1st of 2022. Yeah. Shit. You're right. So just... here, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. I think we sign Verlander because I want to add to this bullpen. And if we sign DeGrom, we have no money left. <laughs> Fair. But right? Verlander or do we team. just sign DeGrom because it's DeGrom? But have Verlander, you seen pitch? have no money left too. Have you seen DeGrom pitch? Yeah, he's really good. Pretty good. He'd be good on the Angels. You think? Oh. This is so hard. Okay. Um, they don't need any more starting pitching. I don't want Bassett. Depend wise. I don't, I don't want Bassett. Bassett. Do we sign Anybody Verlander? Bassett, like, Would we just offer Verlander? If you're not going to get... What? What did we just sign Verlander to? Three for 135. Oh. Oh, that hurts. Yeah, Sure. What did oh. Scherzer Scherzer got three for one thirty? Yeah, or one thirty two or something. Yeah, so like Verlander, he's gonna pull the Lindor shit. Like, I need one more million dollar than Scherzer because I just won the fucking Cy Young. Yeah, and he deserves it. But it um, just... all right, so we just gave Verlander that. We're done in the starting rotation. Let's find bullpen pieces, and like you can't go sign a closer now because you just signed Justin Verlander. Um, yeah. Even though they might need a closer, who's their closer slotted in right now? Jimmy Herget? That sucks. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I love Jimmy Herget, but he Herget was fine. Herget was yeah, but he fine. can't be the closer. Yeah, but what does closer even mean anymore in Major League Baseball? What does it even closer mean? Closer means you got huge nuts, and I'm not sure Jimmy Herget has huge nuts. Have you seen Jimmy Herget's nuts? Yeah, it, well, no, I've seen his slider. <laughs> I haven't seen his nuts. I got to see his nuts. That's the thing. Jimmy Herget, if you want to shoot me a Twitter DM, don't post that because it'll like pick up and go viral. But if you do want to send me like a, a nut gauge, I'll, I'll decide if you're a closer or not. All right. Now that we're done with his nuts, they have yeah. lefties. Um, they have loop and they have Quijada. Um, so it's not like, oh, we absolutely need to add a lefty like we had to with the Mariners. Um, so we can be kind of creative here. So, like, right now, um, and you definitely should go check out JustBaseball.com because we have every article under the sun. And right now, I'm scrolling through our best relievers available. Um, and a guy with closer experience who is a righty who I think makes sense if Herget's nuts aren't big enough, which I'm not saying that they aren't. And this article is written by our guy, Leo Morgenstern, who is an absolute dog. Leo, if you're listening to this, love you. Um, what about David Robertson? Yeah. Is he going to be that expensive? No. 38. So we're bringing in two just old bags to pitch, but like, I kind of like both of them. Like David Robertson can still be a guy. He had a two, four, zero ERA last year. You probably didn't know that. You probably didn't know. He also had 20 saves. You also probably didn't know they had eight blown saves, but you know, that's going to happen. Um, a lot of the peripherals don't love him, but they've never loved him. Um, and the, you know, if you look at Stuff Plus by Mr. Eno Saris, I don't think that he's going to love David Robertson either. But David Robertson gets outs, and he's still getting outs. And he has that closer experience, and he was just in the playoffs. I think signing David Robertson to a one-year deal makes a lot of sense here. Let's sign two or three. Mm, two or three? Two? Let's sign two, and I want Tommy Canely on the Angels. Okay, so Canely was a name that I was thinking about. The other name that I was thinking about was Chad Green. No, Yankees are resigning Chad Green. No, yeah, we could we could put him on the Angels. I mean, yeah, or Michael Fulmer is another guy we could look at. So Fulmer, Fulmer might be a bit expensive because you're buying high on Fulmer. He just had a good year. Yeah, um, pretty good year. Three three nine ERA in sixty three innings. Peripherals don't pretty look good great. Year, but Chad Green like didn't have a year. You know True. what I mean? And Canely didn't really have a year. So you. 
you've got a chance to buy low if you broke the bank on Verlander. I kind of think Canely is going to be cheaper than Green. Yeah, probably. Um, but I don't think Chad Green's going to be that expensive. So I, how about two of the three? Robertson, Green, Canely. You have to sign Robertson. That has to be a guy that you sign. So that has okay. to be one of them. And I think we flip a coin between Canely and Green. I would I'll sign see. with Canely because I think he's going to be slightly cheaper. And the upside is is better with him, I think. You know what? You gave me Andrews and Verlander. Uh, I'm in on Canely. Canely? Okay. All right. How much is Canely worth? Five bucks? One year. Three four? million? Okay. Three and a half. 3.5. Three. What is Robertson worth? One year, nine? 20? <laughs> 20. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Like six, seven? Seven and a half. God, that's a lot of money. Like this number adds up quickly in the Angels. I know. Luxury tax. So, okay. Rendon. So, fuck, Anthony let's, Rendon. Let's go over. Let, I know, Rendon. God damn it. Let's go over the... um. Let's go over what we just spent. So the Angels payroll is at $146 million. Yeah. Okay. Um, the luxury tax, tier one of the luxury tax is $230 million. But this, this is year, also this past year. Yeah, this past year. What did it move? What no, it I'm not sure. I, okay. I think it's isn't it the average it's some Company. People can get mad at us on Twitter. Sorry. I think it's 230. That's the parameters that we're going to work we'll, in. We'll call it 230, 145. Okay. 146. Plus 45 for Verlander. 45 a year? Oh, my. Oh, you're right, because that's what three years divided by 135 is. Mm -hmm. That is insane. Yeah, it's crazy, but we're doing it. <laughs> we're doing so it. So we're at, we're at 191. 190. Okay. Andrews is making six. Ten. Ten. Eight. Eight. Nine. All right, that's 200. Yeah. 200 plus 2.5 for Luke Voigt. Three. He just got non tender, dude. <laughs> you uh, remember he led the league at home runs in that short season, the three, same season David five, Fletcher right, was an MVP? Three. 203. Um, now. Uh, Robertson. Robertson is six. He said seven and a half. Seven. All right. Shit. All right. Two ten plus uh four for Canley. Said three, 214 but yeah. plus all the arbitration. They'll pay the luxury tax. Like they're gonna be over 230. It's 214 before arbitration. But do you care? This is your last chance with Shohei Otani because he's a free agent after this year. If you are the Angels, do you think that paying the luxury tax this year is worth it? Yeah. Me too. I mean, no, like honestly, no, because they're not competing with the Astros and like we know what's going to happen with them. But all you got to do is get in. Look at the Phillies. I know. I know that's all you got to do is get in. But at the same time, have you seen the AL East? A lot of teams are still pretty good over there. The Orioles are only trending up. The Blue Jays are still going to be good. The Yankees are still going to be good. The Rays are still going to be good. The Guardians are still going to be good. The White Sox are going to suck. So that's good. Right, bro. <laughs> So Wake up. Hard. This is the toughest one. This is going to be the hardest, most painful episode we record until we do top 10 second baseman and people send us death threats about the the fourth versus the fifth second baseman. That's fine. That's fine. I'm I'm better yeah. with death <laughs> threats than I am trying to stay under the luxury tax. That's a good quote. That'll be on the quote cards, though, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um I yeah, it, it's worth going over that two thirty mark. It is because you're gonna spend the next couple decades saying what if, but exactly. I, this whole era of Angels baseball has been what if. That's what I'm dealing with. Otani's gonna sign a four hundred no three fifty like like three hundred fifty million dollars a year. <laughs> He's but, gonna like, command eighty million dollars a year. That because you did this with fucking Anthony Rendon, you can't pay Otani that. How's that working, bro? If I was an Angels fan, I would hate Anthony Rendon. But he could be so good next. But he could year. be great. I know. Great. But like, he 
you're so hamstrung financially because of that dude. I know. It's so $37 million he's owed. $37 million. Yeah. Because everybody that we just signed is on a one-year deal except Verlander. Yeah. Yes. But we have yeah. to sign Verlander. Yeah, do it. Do it. I'm I'm in. I'm fully in on this. I'm fully in on paying the luxury tax. Okay. So this is now their lineup with all of the deals that we signed. Renhifo's at second, Trout's in center, Otani's at DH, Ward's in left, Rendon's at third, Renfro's in right. We have a Walsh Voigt platoon, which is kind of fire. We have Gio Urshela, Elvis Andrews at short. And then we have a Logan Hoppy, Max Stassi um, catcher thing. Like <laughs> Moniak and Adele yeah. on the bench. And Fletcher. Renfro's in right. Yeah. Renfro's yeah. in right. Okay. Um, Otani and Verlander are at the top of the rotation. Awesome. Then you have Sandoval, Anderson, Detmers. That's awesome. That is awesome. Then in the bullpen, you got Herger, Herget's nuts. You got Tapera. You got Loop. You got Canely. You got David Robertson. You have Berea. You have Quijada. And then you have some other guys. But then as you're Dr. like. Dr. Davidson, Jose Suarez. No, that's what I was about to say. Is like swing man. If anybody gets hurt, you have Suarez and, and Davidson. That's a good team. It's a good ass team. And Silseth. Um, that's probably is that better than the Mariners on paper? Yeah, but we know is. who's gonna yes, it's always second. better than the Mariners on paper. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. The Mariners are just gonna win more games. God damn it. I think yeah, we did I well. Figure, I gotta figure out a way to weather this storm. I I'm not gonna make it through the 2023 season with the Angels. Me neither, but we got through it. Dude, if Elvis Andrews signs with the LA Angels, I'm getting a jersey. I'm buying one. That's gonna be a fire jersey. <laughs> it's fire. A Verlander Angels jersey, I'll buy that one. Actually, a Voight Verlander, I would get a Void <laughs> Verlander. Maybe a Tommy Canely Angels. All uh, right, we're done. Look at my hat. All right. It's, yeah, it's a sweet hat. They're all at my old apartment. I got to get that, especially because I'm in dire need of a haircut. For all those on audio who can't see my hat, um, first of all, thank you for listening. If you wouldn't mind, give us a five-star review. Let us know. In the reviews, if you're listening to Apple Podcasts, who you want to hear next on our Twitters, we've been polling and looky here. We gave out four teams and you guys voted for the Angels. You wanted this. You got it. And it hurt our soul. Back to the merch conversation. My hat, just baseball merch, still live in our merch store. Uh, we got hats left. A lot of things are selling out. We're almost sold out of some sizes because we want to thank all of you for using the code DINGER to get 20% off your Just Baseball merch. Unfortunately, that code is now done. We sold a bunch of stuff. So thank you all for getting your merch. Rate and review. Thank you very much. We'll be back on Friday. So basically, for all the listeners, what we're going to be doing for the next however many weeks, we are going to do playing general manager episodes three days a week. So you'll hear Jack and I, you'll hear Arm and Jack, and you'll hear Arm and I. And then on Friday, we do a week in baseball. If nothing happens, like the, we're going to talk about the Clevenger deal. We're going to talk about Jose Abreu signing. We're going to talk about any rumors that we're hearing. So that's what you'll normally hear on Friday with the three of us. And with that, thank you, everybody.